I'm Dylan Radigan. I've interviewed nearly every CEO and most world leaders during the past 25 years. And now I'm bootstrapping, I'm turning my attention to the new CEOs and the irrepressible entrepreneurs leading the next generation of innovation in the world. Welcome back to Tasty Live. I am Dylan Radigan. Time for another episode of Bootstrapping. Logan Wellbaum, my guest today, the company called Play. Uh, and uh, Logan, uh, welcome. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah. what, what, is, uh, what does Play do? Play helps anyone launch targeted ads across Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Bing, uh, across all these platforms like a pro in seconds. So they pretty much just add a prompt and you can launch ads <laughs> across any uh any network so how is so the, the traditional company would hire a marketing agency in new york or los angeles or chicago yeah um to you know basically spend money buying targeted advertising for cookware or whatever it is let's just use cookware as our example how is what play offers different from what a, comp a cookware company would get in hiring an, an agency yeah. I mean, what's cool about this is that these platforms are always changing every single day. There's a new feature added and it's not like we're going against marketing agencies. Like we're really working with marketing agencies too. So there's a lot of agencies that work with this platform. So because these platforms change every single day, there's always like a new best practice. Um, what we do is that we really work with the website of the business. We create ads that work with these algorithms that Facebook and Google have. And we just help them get uh, amazing results because we're uh, creating ads that are highly engaging. And we create ads um, that have a very high ad relevance and quality score. And like, that's why we call this company play is because all these platforms kind of play this game um, where if you can get your ad and it's kind of like uh, why it's cool is because you can, um, like a small shoe company can compete with someone like Nike if you're able to create an ad that's relevant and engaging. And that's kind of like what our platform does. We have not just the targeting in there, but you can easily create images and videos um, that are highly relevant and engaging. And so let's say I'm a small shoe company and I have a website. Would I hire, would I use Play in addition to an agency or would I use Play instead of an agency? Some agencies do use Play. But what uh, small co shoe companies, it kind of gives them the power to use these best practices that agencies might have to spend five, six, 10 years um, kind of learning and understanding. We're building these best practices using the best features from each platform. So I would, so the shoe company would take their website and yep. their, whatever their basic video content is and sort of the, whatever their essential words are for messaging, whatever that is, and lay that into the play platform and then the play platform would optimize the video image etc in order to then direct the ad spend is that what how it would work exactly so a small business all they would have to do is just add their website they can describe kind of what they're trying to promote maybe they have a, a sale on running shoes they can just type in running shoes and they can just tap generate prompt we generate a prompt that works with our integration with chat gpt that kind of prompt will select the right targeting and they kind of add it on Facebook for one time. And we're creating the ads across every single other ad platform from Spotify to Bing to even TikTok um, with best practices. And it kind of creates these very pure A-B tests. And that's all they really have to do is just add that, you know, their website and kind of what they're trying to promote. And how long have you been around? What sort of what sort of results are you seeing? What what do you consider the key metrics? You know what what uh, what's how's it going? Yeah, we've been around since 2020. Mm -hmm. I was self funding this all myself. Um, you know, it started off. I taught myself all about Google Ads, um, Facebook Ads. I had a clothing company that I started. Uh, we made clothes in Los Angeles, and I was like, okay, this is great, but how can I get it out there? So I started running ads, figured that out. Um, I ended up going to working at Google where I created a lot of the certifications and processes for, you know, how did these top agencies and businesses learn about Google ads from there? There's so much stuff at Facebook and it's just like, there's so much content for small businesses to learn, like all the bidding. It's just such a nightmare for them to learn. So um, we've been around since 2020, um, but it really started just from seeing that pain point of there's so much content that these businesses need to learn. 
And how can they run ads efficiently? Like we only charge a subscription. We don't charge a percent of ad spend. It's not about getting them to spend more. Um, it's about getting their ads costing less for them so they can start spending more if they, if they choose to. And we can help businesses get a 90% cheaper ad cost just because how we're playing that game of creating an ad that's highly relevant uh, to who they're reaching. And that's why a lot of customers use us. We can help them get a 90% cheaper ad cost because we're really focused on creating an ad that people actually like seeing. And, and how do you know that it's an ad they like seeing? It's um, a lot of it's from our creative. Like we're really focused on the images and videos. Like what people actually see is actually the most important part of the ad. A lot of people might get in the weeds of like bidding and how do you set up a you know specific campaign. But the most important part is like, what do people actually see? So we have integrations with companies like Shutterstock, um, where we take on the cost, businesses can use any sort of images or videos from Shutterstock. For example, like if you're a realtor in Chicago, um, you can use these uh, videos or images from you know homes in Chicago where you might you know how how would you get that video? You you might have to pay you know a drone company to get that aerial footage. But we're taking these videos, and with our algorithms, we're able to add audio overlay onto them. Uh, text overlay and just create like very engaging ads plus with how we're recommending the targeting to reach these people too and what do you can you be more specific about that in terms of targeting recommendations yeah so for example like if you're a realtor um in chicago like how do you reach certain home buyers for example like how do you know you're reaching home buyers so we will just understand um, not only kind of like where you're located, like we'll recommend the different locations that you should be targeting based on your prompt. So for example, like you could just type in like 422 Newport Way waterfront property. We'll create that ad with the right ad copy. And it's not like we're just creating like one ad. We create hundreds of different ad combinations. And by doing that, the budget is automatically moving to the highest performing image or video or ad text. So your budget is also being optimized. And we really like just work with these algorithms uh, from Facebook and Google to recommend the right keywords for you or to recommend um, the right interests on Facebook or TikTok. And is there like a minimum amount of money that what company would need to spend in a given month in order to basically get enough velocity to get real data? Like, is there some sort of minimum floor where you're running enough A-B testing and getting enough touch points that you can then actually adjust? Yeah. I mean, a lot of our customers start off spending just $10 a day. Like they're not the biggest of businesses. So a lot of them will start off just with $10 a day. And as they see results over time, we will actually let them know uh, when they should start increasing their budget by maybe 25% or, you know, we'll actually guide them as far as when they should increase their budget. But we always say, start off with just $10 a day, um, get your tests in, and then uh, we'll help you from there. And so what is your vision for the future of the company? You know, a lot of businesses might use Canva for creating, you know, images and things like that. A lot of people might know about Canva. Um, we want to be the Canva for advertising for these businesses. Um, we have a little bit more of a difficult problem because we have to create a perfect ad and it has to perform like week one, week two, week three, almost like a driverless car it has to keep going um, throughout the months and years. So we really want to be like the Canva for advertising. And who, is there someone that you view as competition particularly, or is there someone that you view as a, you know, a model with a, that, that you would aspire to, to replicate or, you know, how do you see yourself in the marketplace relative to what exists? Yeah. I mean, we're the first people to create this sort of text to ad model. You know, there's like a lot of companies that do are, that are doing like text to video or text to images. We're the first to do this text to ad model. So it's like a really great use case of AI and like, how can you actually use this to grow a business versus kind of creating like cat images that you might just post online. So it's like a really um, applicable use case. We're the first people to do this. And, you know, I'm sure there might be some other people, but we work extremely close with our customers every single day, um, hear their feedback. And that's kind of what gives us a, a leg up, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and What's the sort of bear? Let's assume all everything you're saying is validated and is working, and you have this momentum. Where do you is there is there a a barrier to your growth? In other words, are you is there a do you have to staff up to do this? Or is there programming demands to do this? You know, what are the consequences of rapid success? Yeah, I mean, we're always trying to hire. Like this started out, I was pretty much just 
creating it myself for the first year, bootstrapping it, self-funding it. And now we have 11 people on the team. So I think by potentially May, we'll double. Um, but I think just our main competitor is kind of like time. Like how soon can we get all these features in? Even though we have over 11 different ad networks, more than anyone right now. So everything, like all the ma major social channels, there's still, you know, Pinterest and there's still um, many other ad networks that we want to add that you can just select and launch ads across all of these. And then, so let, let, whether it's a cookware company or a shoe company, but let's say, I don't know, it's a cookware company. Um, do you, or do, does the, plat, the AI, either you or the AI guide the targeting? So if I want, I'm, I'm like, I want to find, I want to, I want to sell pots and pans, let's say. And so I, I, there's no point in servicing pot and pan ads to people that don't have a kitchen or don't live in a house. And so my best, let's say my best customer, somebody who just rented an apartment or somebody who just got married or somebody that just bought a house, um, you know, who, or, you know, the, there's a million versions of targeting, right? Somebody who yeah. bought a, a shoe online in the last six months. And so we know they're online shoe buyers or all these things who, yeah. who's tweet, who's tuning that aspect. That's kind of like how we're, that where it's kind of on us, like how we're doing it. And like, for example, it's just varies per platform. And like, for example, for but that's AI or that's peep, that's H human intelligence. That's it's AI plus with ours. So we kind of build it like with our best practices. So for example, like on Google, they, even though they give you that option to like say, you know, this, this person might have purchased a shoe in the last 12 months. How we're launching the ads on Google is very contextual based. So like if you're researching, let's say you're on like HGTV.com, we might show your pots and pans while people are reading relevant articles um, versus just kind of, you know, you're on a snowboarding website and you'll see like a pots and pans ad. Like we're showing it to where people actually are, which is just sort of good marketing. And it's Meaning if I'm already on a home, I'm looking at restoration hardware online or whatever it is. Like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, also, because we all know that the that the social media companies listen to everything that we say and then feed us back. You know, if I if I talk about vitamins because I'm like, oh, I haven't been taking my fish oil. Yeah. All of a sudden I get a fish oil ad on my Instagram or whatever, or, or we also know that they track our thumb speed. So if I slow down on a picture of the beach or all of a sudden I'll get a, a they're like, oh, do you want to go to the beach? Or yeah. if I slow down on a picture of a car. And so are you also tapping the, the sort of darkest and most sinister aspects of this, which is the constant spying and observation of every human behavior in order to manipulate us? I don't think so, because like how we're really doing is that we want to show ads in the most relevant place. And we also I mean, we do work with these platform algorithms, so they're very good at, at targeting as well. So we'll kind of work with them um, and use a lot of their algorithms. But, you know, we want to show ads like if you're watching how to you know restore a kitchen on YouTube, we want to show like that pots and pan ad right there and not just be like, you know, you're watching an ad about something else and you see a random ad. So it's it's really about just being contextual. And um, I think with third-party cookies being removed on Google, I think a lot of that audience targeting will be removed. And, you know, to be honest, like some of those ads can be annoying and intrusive. Like it's it's just the reality. But, um, you know, we want to just create ads that are right at the right spot where people are actually reading, um, you know, something relevant to that ad. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sort of what's ne what's the next year look like for you? Yeah. I mean, last year we grew over 500% last year, um, pretty much just listening to our customers. We've had over 20,000 ads created on the platform. Um, and, you know, I think we just want to add every single ad network, even, you know, right now it's mostly digital. We don't do any out of home stuff. So I think just touching every single ad network, you want to grow your pots and pans business. What are the best exact channels to do that on affordably? Mm -hmm. Um, Impressive. I, I, congratulations on your success. It's a true bootstrapping tale. So I am happy to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's Logan, been a grind, but it's fun. I can imagine. Yeah. Logan Wellbaum, play the website plai.app. Um, you're watching bootstrapping, or this has been bootstrapping. You're watching Tasty Live, and we're back with more after this.